Hey everyone, welcome to Frost Bites with Kelly Frost. I am Kelly Frost, your host for today. We also have the beautiful Linda Long who's co-hosting. Today's guest is Casey Quinn from City Life Residential. His interview was so insightful. We were so lucky to have him. And I'll tell you what, some of the info that he was giving us today, pearls of wisdom. So you don't want to miss this episode. Stay right where you are. Hey guys, welcome back to Frostbites. We have Casey Quinn today from City Life Residential, and of course we still have the beautiful Linda Long. We're going to jump right in here with Casey. Hi, how are you? I'm great. Appreciate you having me. Of Looking course, forward to talking yeah. here, yeah. yeah. We want to have a good time today, so we were told that we should invite you on the podcast. Yeah, it's... Uh I don't know how much of a good time I am these days, but I try to be. <laughs> I try to be, right? Now, why do you say that? Are you working a lot now? I mean, right? It's, it's always a grind being an entrepreneur, right? I'm relatively new to, to the game of entrepreneurship. I'm only about five years in, and uh, growing a business is a struggle at times, right? And, and managing people and, and leadership and all those different things that go into it. I got two little ones at home. Mm. So I got a, a kid turning three soon. I got oh a six boy. month old. My, my wife's pregnant with our third on the way already. Oh, so congratulations. Uh, oh it, I appreciate it. Yeah. Times are busy, but they're fun. They're good. Right. No one wants to be bored. Mm-hmm. Right. So you said you have two already. How old are they? Yeah. Two boys. One's two and a half and one's uh, about seven months now. Wow. Yeah. So we've yeah. maybe had a little bit of a surprise, but uh, <laughs> we're excited. And we just found out, and I don't even think anybody knows this yet. So you guys will literally be the first to know we're having a little girl. So Aww. Yeah, first two are boys. So my wife was, uh, we found out last night, actually, and she was crying. So Oh, the princess. Yeah, she's excited to get her little girl. <laughs> I said, that little, she's going to be in for it, because we got, between me and my, my two sons, that'll be her older brothers. <laughs> Ooh, we'll see. <laughs> so she's going to probably be a tomboy for a little while, and then she's just going to be an ass kicker the rest of her life. Well, I think uh, hopefully both, right? And lots of sports <laughs> in her life, hopefully. Mm-hmm. We'll see. But I'm not going to push them. not going to push them too much into it. So were you really excited to find out you're going to have a girl? I was, yeah, for for multiple reasons. And if I'm going to be honest, one of them was she was not going to stop until she had a girl in her eyes. And so, (laughs) right, it gives us the option now of four and five and six and whatever, you know, whatever we end up there. uh, Mm. Ideally, maybe not ideally, but for now, it would definitely be good with three. It's a lot of work. (laughs) Well, I tell you what, when I first was like uh, thinking about kids, I was like, oh, I want to have four boys. And then I had one, and I was like, maybe another one. And then we had one more, and it was a girl. And I was like, well, I want a beach. Yeah, we've we'll called yeah. it. There's Call nothing it. left. To, that's what I thought. Yeah. I have one. Yeah, I had one of each, and thought, well, there's nothing left to have, so I guess I'll quit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we okay. talked about it too. We said, look, at, at this point, let's wait. You know, we'll wait several years, but I, I, we want to put our past ourselves to have a fourth. You know, five, six years down the line, right? Kind of have the. Different. She has a brother that's 11 years apart from her. Mm-hmm. And so she's loved her whole life having a, you know, a, a younger yeah. brother that much younger than her. Mm-hmm. Right. And so mm-hmm. I think she probably has that in her future or at least mm-hmm. to, to have a conversation around it at some mm-hmm. point. Right. And you? <laughs> Myself? Mm-hmm. Siblings wise? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've got two older brothers, a younger sister. Uh, my two older brothers each have, one has four kids, one has three. They're trying to have more. So we got a big, big mm-hmm. family, all local. Uh, we all live within wow. the South Hills area of Pittsburgh, uh, within 20 minutes apart from each other. So That's we're very, nice. very close knit family for sure. So what's yeah. Thanksgiving like? Thanksgiving's nuts, especially these days with all the kids everywhere. It's funny because they're still a little bit young. Mm-hmm. My oldest brother has some older children, but we're like, we can only imagine what uh, you know five like you know what the holidays will look like five years from now. It's going to be mm-hmm. wild, but we're we're looking forward to it mm-hmm. for sure. I bet. Do you guys all get together at one person's house for Thanksgiving? Yeah, we rotate, right, between my brothers. My dad passed away a couple of years ago, so, you know, we, we've we transitioned to the children having all of the holidays, and so we, we rotate houses. Does that make you feel like a grown-up 
having Thanksgiving at someone's house like that? I'm never going to feel like a grown up. <laughs> I still say to this day, I don't know what I want to do when I grow up. So, you know. I still say that. Yeah, right? <laughs> and I'm a lot older than She's you are. She's 41. Yeah. Uh, Just wait. I was thinking like 39. You, oh, <laughs> God bless you. You're my new best friend. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So how do we get started here with City Life? I understand that you're a numbers guy. I am, yeah. Former CPA. Uh, you know, I actually got fired from... I was a consultant for, for a lot of years in public accounting, you know, out of college about 10 years and then uh, took a CFO role, ultimately got fired from that 10 months in and decided uh, it was enough, enough was enough working for other people mm-hmm. and uh, not believing in the vision and the mission of what's going on. And so that's when we kind of launched City Life about five years ago. That's kind of a blessing getting fired from jobs, wouldn't you say? It's, you know, c- career-wise is the best thing that's ever happened to me without a doubt, mm-hmm. right? Because the truth is I didn't even know what an entrepreneur was. I say it all the time, like I never had... I watched Shark Tank, Shark, love Shark Tank, watch every episode, but like I always used to say, I don't have a product. I don't, I'm not creative. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, I stare at numbers and understand the business side of how to, how to run things, right? And I understand the culture side, but I didn't know how to create a product, right? I always told me kind of how to create a product mm-hmm. that we sold them like, so I just never, you know, never imagined that for me. Mm-hmm. And then obviously, you know, everything changed when I got fired from a job and was just kind of figuring out what I was going to do next in my life and realized this, you know, this whole wheel of, of working for other people that, you know, don't share the same visions and missions and treat people the right way and, mm-hmm. you know, have the right cultures and different things just wasn't for me anymore. And so mm-hmm. that's when we kind of launched yeah. at that point in time back in 2019 City Life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, culture is king. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's amazing how many people say that exact same thing. They lost their corporate job and sometimes they lost two or three corporate jobs and got to the point where it's like, I, I just don't want to work for anybody again. And they start their own business. It's a, it, it, you'd be surprised how many times you hear that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's crazy too, right? Cause it, I mean, the biggest, the massive difference is, is about accountability. Can you hold yourself accountable regularly? And most people in, the, in society don't want to do that. Right. And so that's why, you know what I mean? You always talk about, and so many entrepreneurs push being an entrepreneur, which I don't, right. Because it's a very different world that you're living in. It's a very different standard for- of accountability and pressure and anxiety and different things that happen. So you have to be built that way and it's okay if you're not. What I always push is the idea of entrepreneurship, right? And so being your own boss, being your own entrepreneur inside of the businesses that you're at, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Again, the trick is you've got to find the right companies to be at, right? You've got to find the right visionaries. You got to find the right, right. leadership and, and be bought into that vision and mission, right? And so that's why we push it so hard at City Life because it's okay if you're not bought into that, right? Let's, you know, it's about creating happiness. And so we can find that for you el- elsewhere if if you're not believing in that, what we're doing, and that's okay, right? Because it's about creating happiness and it's not for everybody. Mm-hmm. I know that because I, you know, even prior to getting fired and prior to bouncing around, I was in, you know, consulting and finance transformation. So I was traveling the country 67% of my time. I saw hundreds mm-hmm. of building b- companies from, you know, Fortune 100 all the way down to, to medium size to small size business. And, and my job was to come in and fix their finance department at the end of the day. And all of the time, what I realized is I'm in the CFO's mm-hmm. office talking to the CFO and saying, you know, quite frankly, you're the problem, right? Like mm. you're the problem because your people aren't happy. Right. When you have unhappy people, they don't do good work for you because they just don't care. Right. Right. And mm-hmm. so, you know, it's not about changing the process here. It's about changing the way that you treat your people. Mm-hmm. And that usually didn't go over super well. And obviously, yeah. I, you know, from a sales perspective, spun it a little bit differently ultimately. Mm-hmm. Right. But that that's what I realized around, like, that's right. what's important. That's how you create a shared vision, a shared mission amongst your team and, and let them be entrepreneurs within your business. As long as you're sharing that, then everybody's on the same, tr- you know, the same trajectory to go after what it is that they want to go after, mm-hmm. but they don't have to have the the risk and the fear of starting your own company. And what if I fail and all of those different things, right? Because they have the support of everybody around them. Yeah. And having everybody understand the clear mission and having it be all mm-hmm. together. I think that's, um, very important too. Oh, for sure, right? Yeah. And for us, you know, we run on what we call EOS, Entrepreneurial Operating System. But mm-hmm. for us, it's all about the vision and mission. And so we've been very clear on it. Everything that we do, every meeting that we have, we talk about it. Mm-hmm. You know, our mission is build happiness, transform lives, strengthen the community, right? It has nothing to do with the real estate. We've been able to build a $100 million portfolio in five years. But it has nothing to do with the real estate. It has everything to do with what is our vision and how, and what are our core values? How are we living and how are we treating our people on a daily basis? Everybody that we get involved with right and that's what's been the major difference because as we all know one plus one in the people world is much greater than two if you have the right people right, right? you have the right vision you have the right mission core values working together to, to, to reach a common goal mm-hmm. so and I've seen so many people that are in real estate just jump 
from company to company. Yep. And, and I'm watching someone and they're like, everything they do is blue. And then three months later, everything they do is maroon. And then three months later, everything they do is a different color. And, and I'm like, who, who are you working for now? And they seem to have their identity attached to that company or to those colors. Mm-hmm. And it's just about real estate and that. But they don't like who they're working for. Yeah. You know, right. It's yeah. the same system that they're doing, but they just don't like it. And they're not successful because they're not happy. Yeah, I mean, I think that's it too, especially on the retail side, which you know, I'm assuming you're talking about with the every three months change in every college, right? Because in the the crazy thing about real estate agents mm-hmm. and in the marketplace, eighty five percent of all real estate agents turn over every single year. Mm. Think about that. Eighty five percent of the entire industry turns over every single year. Wow. Ninety five percent of all transactions are done by five percent of real estate agents, uh. right? And so, to your point, it's around they're not building enough of momentum. And part of the problem is all agents are 1099 employees, so they can jump. It's very easy to get into the industry. Mm. Everybody sees the shiny object, right? It's about modeling, it's about posters and billboards. And at the end of the day, it's about selling real estate and actually creating a, a, a job and creating a career and creating a business for yourself as an agent. Mm. And it's hard, right? And so, people see the shiny object of real estate and say, I want to do that. This is easy. But the reality is, it's like anything else, it's tough, mm. right? It, it's yeah. a. It's a grind, and you've got to you got to dig in your heels, and you've got to get to work. And a lot of people don't want to do that at mm-hmm. the end of the day, right? And so that's why you see that a lot of times, because then they start blaming the brokerage, like, "Oh, you didn't set me up for success." Right. And it's that fine line of, "Well, you're an independent agent, right? You're not necessarily part of you know the corporate culture that we have, or or whatever that is." So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, definitely dealt with that. We own a, a Remax franchise brokerage, and so. Um, you know, it's there. It's a very different dynamic, particularly when you're dealing with you know agents and 1099 employees because it's their own business, right? Mm-hmm. So we're here to support your business. We're not here to support you as an employee, and it's a it's a, it's 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 a harder mechanism to ultimately kind of um, mm-hmm. roll out and, and have a lot yeah, of success that makes with sense. it. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, being an entrepreneur, I mean, that's who I am. You know, I have several different organizations that I run, but it's funny because my husband is not, will never be. Yeah. Could, could never be. Yep. Not his personality. Totally fine with that. Stick with wine, food, beverage. <laughs> good. That's his lane, and yep. he drives it every day, yeah. right? Probably works too many hours. It's fine. But, like, when he comes home and he says, how many more hours do you have to work? Are you going to be done soon? And I finally just looked at him and I go, I'm never right. going to never be done. done. Like, right. it's never just, done. That's the way it is. Like, I will always have something else to do, and when I think I'm done, I'm not. Yeah. Because I just always want to do better and you know. well not only that too right it's it's when you become an entrepreneur you much it's easier for you to realize it's much more about work-life integration than it is about work-life balance right work-life balance creates almost an impossible task for so many people because at least a third of your life essentially is sleeping working and then fun mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. if you want to do good right you want to win in life then naturally they're going to all kind of blend together at the right. end of the day right it's so you got to figure out how to integrate all of it together, particularly even more as an entrepreneur, right? But even, in my opinion, actual W-2 employees and, and what they're doing, as long as you create the entrepreneurial environment for them, it's the same concept. Mm-hmm. So we preach that big time in our culture and what we're doing at City Life and Accruity and, and the businesses that we have because, again, it's impossible to have work-life balance at the end of the day, in my opinion. You've got to be able to integrate it well and be able to time manage very well, right? And so we mm-hmm. preach that as well. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Mm-hmm. So I went to Florida a few months ago. Well, it's probably been more than a few months but um, with two other females. And my one girlfriend said, are you bringing your laptop? And I was like, well, yeah. And she's like, well, we're going to Florida. I was like, yeah? <laughs> and she goes, well, why are you bringing your laptop? I go, well, why wouldn't I bring my laptop? I'm right. going to have some stuff to do. Mm-hmm. It's not as if I'm, like, turning off my life. Yeah. I have mm-hmm. to bring my laptop. I got stuff to do still. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And yeah. I will tell you, I've always taken my computer, but I'm getting better at not taking my computer. But then again, most of my phone. work these days is on my phone. Mm-hmm. Right, it's a lot of strategy, a lot it's of conversation with lap- my it's manager. A smaller, laptop. smaller laptop, yeah. yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yep. It's, mm-hmm. You're right. It's yeah. exactly what it is. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I know. My husband used to ask me the same thing when we go on vacation. Why are you taking your laptop? I'm like, I, because I I have stuff I have to do. Well, we're going on vacation. And I'm like, I understand, <laughs> but I still have stuff to do. So, Lucky you know, mine's not like glued to I my mean, hand. it's like, well, I mean, when you're, when you're a sole entrepreneur, you, there's nobody, I mean, when you're not doing it, nobody else is going to do it for you. Yep. I mean, there isn't a coworker that's going to pick up the slack. So it's like, it's either me or nobody. So, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'll never forget back when we started. I mean, my wife don't ask me those questions ever anymore. Cause she, <laughs> she, when, when we first started the company, she, I mean, it was, we didn't have kids yet at the time. And it was, I mean, it was 20 hours a day, every single day, no matter what. Mm. So she just knew if we're going away, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Right? None of that matters. And so she's, she's definitely has stopped that. Now when we're around with kids, it's a little bit different, right? And, and trying to, trying to be present and that's not her. It's mostly me trying to, trying to really be present there. Mm-hmm. And that's definitely a struggle. I mean, I've, Got a lot of connections across across the country now. I work with you know my you know biggest mentor and, and coach along the way here is it lives out in San Diego, and so there's a time difference there. And so every once in a while we're you know we're having conversations and different things in the evening. So it makes it tough, but it's figured Can I ask out. Who right? that is? Yeah, Ken Clothier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's uh, he runs. He's a you know he's one of the best real estate investors there is in the in the world, quite frankly, in my opinion, and you know a massive leader out in the education space. And so he runs a massive education. Uh, business. Uh, it's called the Boardroom Mastermind. I joined it about two years ago. It's absolutely 100% changed my entire life. Uh, you know, it's essentially right now 250 of the, of the best residential real estate investors in the country, right? And so we've been able to, you know, we, we meet four times a year, uh, two days, and then we actually go away out of the country two days a year with just the upper group, which is about 30 of us of the 250 that are, um, how do I say it humbly, uh, doing bigger things, right, have bigger businesses and really moving the needle quicker. Mm-hmm. Uh, and those are much more experiential. But, yeah, he's absolutely changed my life. He's such a good coach, so phenomenal mm-hmm. uh, at everything he does and just inspires, right? I mean, I literally don't wear jewelry, and I wear two wristbands. The time is now. That's his slang, right? Like, you know, our number one core value at City Life's Let's Go. And so, you know, we just meshed really, really well in terms of, like, what are we waiting for, right? We're never going to get the morning back today. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, what are we doing this afternoon to, to improve our lives and, and figure out how to win? And I so, love that you're, you know, participating in masterminds. I think they're so important. Uh, mm-hmm. I say that all the time. Um, I mean, I have them like on my phone and the app and everything is the whole mastermind. And that's just because if I just need some inspiration or just want to you know, educate myself on something else and just keep, you know, adding to everything yep. else that I know, I watch those. But having someone like that, I'm sure, is completely just ah, I mean, it's altering. It's mm-hmm. it's insane, right? I mean, it's completely even changed on the business front, right? Like in that group, I now have partnerships mm-hmm. from the group of people I met. Right. I'm partnering with a guy up in Detroit now. We're building a portfolio up in Detroit through his name, through his business. Mm-hmm. You know, we actually own two high-end luxury Airbnbs down in Kissimmee, Florida, 12-bed and a 10-bed bath right next door to each other. Mm-hmm. And so we're doing a short-term, you know, destination Disney thing down there together. He's running that. Uh, several other yeah. partnerships and investments that we've done through that group, right? So it's not just about, right, the inspiration and, right. and all of those things that come with it, but it's about the network that you create and mm-hmm. build, right? I can literally call any of the real estate yeah. investors across the country and ask them something that's going on, right, if we have a challenge or whatever that is. Mm-hmm. And so there's no better place than, than masterminds for education, which, mm-hmm. again, in my opinion, if you're not getting educated every single day of your life, mm-hmm. You're falling behind, right, right? Right. And so, how do we stay out ahead of everybody? We got to continue to educate. Just because I'm mm-hmm. a successful business owner and building, you know, the third fastest growing company in Pittsburgh, well, it doesn't matter, right? I've got to get massively educated every single day, mm-hmm. or someone's coming up on my butt trying to mm-hmm. trying to pass me up, right? Mm-hmm. So, absolutely. I went to a mastermind in uh, Palm Springs right before, you know, the whole pandemic thing happened. But same thing. It was like three days. Yep. So I mean, it was it was fantastic. I loved it. Yeah. You know, so many connections. Same thing, though. Mm-hmm. Even right now, I can you know, reach out to people in California in different areas and just, you know, go do business and ask for help and bring them here and whatever you need. But, yeah. I mean, it is. It's crucial to have those connections. It's crucial to continue to have development of yourself and your, you know, the people mm-hmm. that you're working with and, and everything. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. 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 It's nuts, too, right? You, you To that point, you do things that you never, ever would imagine doing. I have a coaching client in Billings, Montana. I've never been to Montana. I never even heard of Billings, Montana prior to, you know, to that network and that group. And, you know, now I'm working on a 22 unit deal, helping him through trying to get that thing sold out in Billings, Montana. Mm-hmm. Right. And like, <laughs> so it just opens your eyes to just the world and how right. big it is and mm-hmm. how amazing it can be and how many awesome people there are out there that you just don't realize when you're living in your little, you know, your little hole, if you will, right. In your own mm-hmm. little box in your mm-hmm. own little world. Right. Yeah. 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 That's very, very true. So, you have a partner, right? It's yes. not just you. Yep. So how does that work for you? You know, a lot of people have a hard time mm-hmm. having a partner and other people absolutely love having a partner. Yeah, I'll tell you, we've, you know, I, I openly say this because I see it so much. And actually, you know, to tell you, the, 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 that boardroom, it's called the Boardroom Mastermind with Kent. I've actually kind of 
developed myself and now I'm now a board of director on that company, right? So I've seen so many businesses and I've seen so many partnerships fail. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you unequivocally, in my opinion, from an entrepreneurship, but partnerships are the absolute hardest thing to be able to successfully do, right? Because it's two different opinions mm -hmm. to align visions and line visions and missions, mm -hmm. core values, and then job responsibilities along the way is really, really hard to do. I'll just be honest. I mean, we've had other partnerships that, that have failed, right? Since we've started, right? We've gone into other things. They've failed. We've never, you know, I'm just, it's, it's a little bit of luck, right? But it was, you know, we shared the same vision. We shared the same mission, but we never, you can't even, I can't even explain to you how different our skill sets are, mm -hmm. right? And so it's just always aligned. We want the same things, mm -hmm. but our skill sets were aligned differently. And so we've just meshed mm -hmm. really, really well as a partnership. Our roles are completely different. I run the company. Brian's job is to find us our real estate. And that's what we do, right? He goes out and he's involved in culture and, right, those different things as the leaders, right? We started just the two of us and now we have, I think, 50-something mm -hmm. employees, agents, yeah. you know, virtual professionals and everything. And so, um, you know, we just were very different. And so, again, it was, you know, I know the business side of this. I know the culture side of this. I know how to run a company because I've been in that world. You know, Brian, has never, he's never had a job. His first ever job that he had was when I put us both on $40,000 salary. So he's the first ever W-2 job that he ever had. <laughs> oh, my. You know, so he's been a serial entrepreneur. He went into the, you know, he was doing, he openly admits it, right, but some things that probably weren't as, uh, you know, kosher or, or legal as maybe we could say it. And, <laughs> you know, he cleaned that up, became a real estate agent. He was one of the best real estate agents. You know, we talked about it earlier in all of Pittsburgh doing 12 to $15 million a year. Started to get on the investment side, and right at that time is when I got fired and we said, hey, mm. you know what I mean? We could scale something massive here. I don't know how to do what you do. And all I need you to do is do that and I'll scale us massive, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what we did. And ever since then, it's worked out. He stays out of my lane. He lets me run the company. Mm -hmm. And I stay out of his lane, right, as far as mm -hmm. going out and finding the real estate that we want to buy. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 worked out really, really well. That's great because sometimes partnerships like that are worse than marriages. Mm. I mean, yeah. really. And a really cool thing is, you know, we've created a, a, separate, a separate company. We actually, I worked... When I was at Grant Thornton, the day that I started at Grant Thornton, um, you know, the guy that started for me as a, as a new hire, started as a manager, uh, graduated from Pitt as an accountant. Well, anyways, fast forward seven years later, he came and took my controller role at City Life. Mm -hmm. uh, well, less than nine months into the – he promised me two years because he always wanted to be an entrepreneur. Well, I took him to a couple masterminds and a couple events. Mm -hmm. and we sat down and uh, it didn't last two years. Mm -hmm. Anyways, we spun off our brand, a new company and basically was, which is accounting. And so that partnership's been amazing too. He's incredible. He runs the company. I help him on strategy, um, you know, strategy, overall decision-making and different things like that. But I'm very removed from all of the business. And so he runs it and that's gone incredibly well for us as well. So just, again, you be authentic, right? Authenticity is so massive and just be who you are. Mm -hmm. Be open and honest. Always tell the truth about everything mm -hmm. that you're doing. And that's how you figure out if the partnership will be good or not, right? Mm -hmm. And it takes time. You've got to develop the relationship, right? And, and as long as you're okay. doing those things, then you know pretty quickly, right? And I think for me, one of the really good things that I've always been at is being able to uh, read people mm -hmm. and understand, like, deeper down what's going on there and then be able to so quickly be able to make decisions around, right, culturally and, mm -hmm. and will this be a good fit? Will this work for us? Different things like that. Will they fit into the company or not? All of those things. And so um, I've just been lucky and gifted when it comes to finding the right people uh, to surround myself with. And I'll be honest with you, I'm very intentional around it too. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a book out there called Who Not How. I think that absolutely fundamentally changed my entire life. And so every question, every problem, at the end of the day, business is just solving problems. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. All right. There's literally nothing else to it. Solve problems every day and you can grow and advance for it, right? People problems, service pro all of it, right? And so, you know, for me, that's kind of what I realized, right, is, is, is that's what it's doing. And so been lucky and gifted overall, right, when it comes to that. And we're just getting started, so it's it's uh, it's fun. But just be your true, authentic self always, mm -hmm. and right, and, and the truth will come out, and the relationships will either grow or they won't. Mm -hmm. you know? And that's a tough thing. It's a tough thing at the end of the day, letting go of old relationships. I'm sure you've done a ton of that because you've had to. Yeah. If you're developing, you just inherently know that other people around you are not developing. Right, right. And so it's not that I've changed. It's that I've grown. Mm-hmm. And some people grow with you and some people don't. And yep. some people just, they don't want to. And they're yeah. very complacent. They want to grow their own way. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's very mm -hmm. true. So you have 50 people that are on your team. Is that continuing to grow or do you like that number? Is it intentionally smaller or is that not a small number? No, I think we're a little bit larger from a people head count than, you know, most companies would probably be at our size. But the very fundamental difference from our company compared to most others similar to us is, 
Most other companies want to build their portfolio and they outsource a lot of the actual service work that goes around it. Well, from day one, we looked at it very differently. We wanted to grow an enterprise value. We wanted to grow a culture and a team Mm -hmm. to service our real estate, right? And so we're fully integrated. Mm -hmm. What that means is we have our own construction company. We have our own property management company. We have our own sales company. We have all of these things. And so all of the services that go around the real estate itself, Mm -hmm. we've built out the mechanics of it because that's what I know how to do. That's what I'm good at. And so we don't outsource much, right? We don't buy real estate and then hire a separate property manager company. We do all of that in-house. Mm-hmm. And so we need more people. Our vision's a billion dollars in real estate by 2030. Mm-hmm. It's incredibly clear. Like, you're not going to get through the first eight minutes of an interview with our HR team not knowing exactly what our vision is. It's the first thing we talk about. It's the only thing we talk about as far as where we're going. Either you get aligned or you don't. Every decision that we make is based around our vision and our mission and our core values. Yeah. And so, you know, to your, to your question, we want to grow it as big as we possibly can. My dream is, you know, what I would tell you is to give back to the world in a way very different. I want to create jobs. I don't believe in handouts, right? And certainly we're interested and we have it on our big board to make sure we get a nonprofit really up and running and doing the right thing there. But to me, it's about creating opportunities, creating happiness for people. And Nobody's happy if they're not winning. And most mm-hmm. of us want a great job, right? And so you can come into my company and, and have a great job and, and be winning there. Mm-hmm. And so I want to create as many of that as I can, right? Just people being able to, to go live a different life than they're used to. Because the world is so full of companies that just treat their employees horribly and mm-hmm. so many miserable people that don't want to go to work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we always talk about at our company, if you got Sunday scaries, come to me. Like, pass over everybody. Like, that idea of Sunday scaries and not wanting to go to work, the day that that happens, let's have a conversation. Heard, I've never heard that before. Yeah. The Sunday scaries. Oh, yeah. Is that really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember when I had a, well, what I always call my paying job. Um, <laughs> sun, I hated Sundays. By, by Sunday evening, it was just like I was just dreading having to get up in the morning and go to work the next day. Yeah, that's crazy. You never heard of it. It's I've, a pretty, yeah. But it's exactly that, right? If you don't want to go to work when you wake up, mm-hmm. and it's really mm-hmm. kind of creating stress mm-hmm. in your life. It ruins your Sunday evenings. Problem. Yeah, uh-huh. it and ruined my Sunday evenings because, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. I guess I've just had my own. Kind of why I left that <laughs> so long. Yeah. paying job. and. <laughs> And started my own business. So, yeah. Yeah, that would be, that's no way to live. Yeah. I'm just a, a firm believer in the happier you are on a daily basis, the better it is that you're going to do whatever it is that you're doing. Yeah. Right. When you're miserable, you don't want to do anything mm-hmm. at right. the end of the day. And so we've got to create people. We've got to create an opportunity for people to find their happiness within our organization, and then we'll all win. Yeah. So that's what we just continuously go after. And that's the first question I ask people. I say, what makes you happy, right? Like, what is it that you're going to do It'll make you happy, mm-hmm. right? Because so many people just do things to make money, right? Their right. job. Yeah. It's like, well, listen, if this isn't making you happy, let me move you. And so we do that all the time in our company. Mm-hmm. Like, it's crazy. You know, I always give a perfect example of my chief investment officer now is actually my first ever boss. Mm-hmm. So I graduated from Duquesne University in 2010. I started at Ernst & Young. He was my boss when I started there. And so now he's our chief investment officer. But we brought him in because he had 15 years of finance experience. Mm-hmm. So we brought them mm-hmm. in on the finance side, and we quickly realized, and we do PI tests, and we do a lot of um, cognitive yeah. tests and things to really understand people. It's really important in our organization to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we realized, like, he's not, he doesn't love doing that. He's not good at it because he's not his highest and best use. What his highest and best use is is talking to people all day. Mm. So now he's in the investor relations role at the end of the day. He talks and manages all of our investors, and he's amazing at it, and um, it's crazy to think, right? He came in as a finance person who's supposed to be in the back office in the books, yeah. and seven months later, his only job is to be on a golf course, right? Because we worked <laughs> through and figuring it out, like, yeah. what makes yeah. you happy? Mm-hmm. You know, and either we get you in that role, or we don't have that role, and we've got to find you a better place to go live, mm-hmm. you know, and go be who it is mm-hmm. that you want to be. Mm-hmm. So uh, and we've had several examples and instances where we've had to do those things. That's interesting. Yeah, I used to have to give those tests, the PI tests. Yeah. yeah. And it was so funny because we had people that were in the office, people that were management, and people that were like in construction. And people that were in certain areas that you would never think should be somewhere else, should be somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And we just sort of move people around and the production would just go through the roof. Right. You know, the, what they were doing and what they wanted to do. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was just completely different. People kind of pigeonhole themselves. Mm-hmm. And when you sort of give them options and then encourage them to take that option, it makes a world of difference. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, for sure. And it's like, 
it's crazy too because we do we have we use a company called Team Architects, and I'm really close with the owners of that company. And what Team Architects does is essentially help architect your team. And so you actually take tests that score you based on the role and function of which we're defining and, and combining the two. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy because over the time, over these past couple of years, people will score really bad and we're like, no, we don't agree. Mm-hmm. And so they take a job and they crush it, right? Because they're motivated. Mm-hmm. And so motivation is so different than accountability and what it is that you true self, what you really want. Mm-hmm. And so they come in and they kill it and they'll kill it for six months and they're just crushing it. And all of a sudden they're burnt out. Mm. Right, that's the biggest difference is they burn out so much faster because the cognitive tests are right. Mm. We are all wired a certain way. It is just factual, mm-hmm. and right. so yeah, you can overcome that, but you can't overcome it forever. Right, mm-hmm. right. And so temporarily through motivation, whether it's money motivated or education motivated or whatever it is that you want, mm-hmm. you come in and you do an amazing job. But it wears on you so much more than as if if you're in your happy place in your in your right. font what it is that you're supposed to be doing right mm-hmm. that's at the high level between you know sales or administration or whatever that is mm-hmm. but it's crazy because sales is the biggest thing sales is a certain pi without a doubt mm-hmm. and when you bring people in that don't have that they crush it and all of a sudden they're burnt out mm-hmm. right fast and we're we are very much recognizing that and still to this day continue to that it comes mm-hmm. out right and so We've gotten even more and more focused on those on those tests and on what they're doing because it's like, look, you might think you're amazing for this job, but I'm just telling you, look, <laughs> you're gonna be burnt out in six months. Um, and so right. Yeah. The you office have those poll says. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just crazy how right it's been because I used to early on say I don't believe that, right? Just mm-hmm. fundamentally, but it's it's it changed me, right? It's it's I've gotten more and more educated through experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is why our number one core value is let's go. Take action because it's the only way you're really going to learn. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. So you ask people all the time, what makes you happy? So what makes you happy? Oh, man. Put me on the spot right there with that <laughs> question. I mean, I think what makes me happy is 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 driving and motivated. You know, it's, it's training at times for sure because of, you know, I put way too much on my plate. Mm-hmm. And so I, you know, I don't do a great job and everything because you have to think about the capacity side of it. But, um, you know, I'm a winner. I want to win, you know, whatever it takes. So I think it's the chase, the chase of winning. I always say, right, what what makes me happy, you know, is not I'll never retire. I'll never be the guy that wants to go retire and sit on the beach. I tell my wife I want to retire by the time I'm 40, but all I really want to do is change what I'm doing on a daily basis to be something a little bit different because I think that I push myself so hard. But at the end of the day, what makes me happy, I tell you, is chasing happiness. Because I think it continually changes. I think it's at different times in everybody's life. But chasing my ha- – like, every day that I wake up, like, what makes me happy? And then these nine other things that I got to go do, like, over the next six months, how do I get rid of these nine things? Because they're not making me happy. Mm-hmm. And so the mm-hmm. continual chase of happiness. What are right? you chasing? The continu- Happiness, right? What is ha- – to me, it's it's fulfillment. Okay. Right? It's it's fulfillment in whatever it is that I want to achieve in that in those moments, right? So sometimes, like, yes, my kids make me more happy than anything in the world, and so I want to spend more time with them, right? But I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm not the biggest nurturer in the world. That's why I struggle as a hands-on manager. I'm very macro because, mm-hmm. like, I just don't have the, the genes in me to nurture, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, if you don't like my style, I don't know how to change, right? I'm just, I'm just tell you like it is. Sometimes it might come off a rude. It's not that. But all I care about is the best, mm-hmm. Right. So all I want us is I want you to be happy and I want us to get the best out of whatever it is that we're doing. So you're not warm and fuzzy. It's hard for me to be warm and fuzzy. You can talk to a lot of people and it, it rubs people the wrong way. But at the end of the day, I say, is it your ego or, or, you know, what are we chasing here? Because I don't care if I'm wrong. I don't care if you're wrong. What I want is the best answer for all of us moving forward, mm-hmm. depending on whatever that is. So to me, always trying to strive for that mm-hmm. is what's my happiness. Mm-hmm. Right. And of course, I like bougie things. I like going away. I like traveling, I like Italy, and you know, I like we have a boat down on the river. I like going on that, even though I think I went like once last year. And you know, we bought two high-end Airbnbs, luxury Airbnbs in Florida because I enjoy doing nice, fun things. I sat at the Laker game next to Kim Kardashian two months ago. Like that was awesome, oh, right? Nice. So living, like living, okay. is 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 um, you know what makes me happy and chasing it, right? Chasing that that feeling of of just I don't know the right word. I'm not the best at English. That was my English and writing were my two. Uh, You're a numbers guy. Weeks. I'm a numbers guy, right? <laughs> and so there you go. Um, but yeah, right. Just chasing, chasing like success, success being defined as whatever it is that we're going after, not necessarily money or winning, but like, mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. what I mean, if next week I want to really be hands on with my kids and be home a lot more, like that's my happiness next week, then I better go after it. Mm-hmm. And going after that is what creates my happiness. It sounds like you'll always be chasing something. 
For sure. Yeah, without a doubt, right? I mean, it's it's definitely evolved, especially with having kids now and kind of watching my, you know, my two-year-old's going on three in a couple months and he's talking and realizing different things. It's just mm-hmm. like, you know, I'm, I'm chasing happiness for him now, right? Like, how can we yeah. teach him to be the best that he can be? Like, and I just envision in my head, you know, it's funny that literally this morning with my wife, I was saying, I bet you, you know, our daughter, who's not even born yet, will run the company one day. Mm. She said, what about our two boys? I said, well, I feel like me and them are going to go in business together. <laughs> and then my, my daughter will run run the main business, right? It's just that, like, that's literally the conversation we had this morning. Mm-hmm. But that's what I visualize. And that's the things I think about. And it's like, how can I get myself today set up for that? And that's what I preach to everybody. It says, look, you, you wake up tomorrow. What is your personal vision? What is your personal mission? Mm-hmm. What is your personal core values? And most people don't have them, right? Most people say, whatever. I said, so when you wake up tomorrow, what's your goal? What's your plans? What do you, where do you want to be? Mm-hmm. And what are you doing tomorrow to get there? So, you know, Kent, you know, my mentor always says, start with the end in mind, right? And where is it that you want to be? Work all the way backwards from that and start getting it. Every day that you wake up, Mm -hmm. start chasing it. And a lot of people, especially in the rooms that I circle and the places that I go speak at, it's, I want financial freedom, right? Or I want to leave my W-2 job and start my own company. I said, great. What did you do today to make sure you're doing that, right? What steps? Where is that, right? If you want financial freedom or leave your W-2 job, Mm -hmm. Where are you thinking about how that you get there, right? Is it just money in the bank saved up enough that you can take a chance? Cool. What's the number? Mm-hmm. And guess what? Nobody ever has it ever. Yeah. Right. And so what's the number? When is the goal? And then how what are we doing every day? Mm-hmm. Right. In this example, maybe it's 200 grand in the bank account. Okay. How much do you have now? And how much can you save every single day to get there and make sure and attract? Are you doing that? Mm-hmm. And everybody says no. It's like, well, then you don't really want that. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, (laughs) otherwise, why aren't you doing it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you're never, ever going to get there. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens. Right. Everybody that's that you just end up in the same spin cycle, miserable every single day or or not really chasing your ultimate fulfillment every day. And Mm -hmm. that's the problem that we see in society. Way too much of it. I completely agree with everything you just said. Mm -hmm. All right. So how old are you? Thirty six. Just turned thirty six. Okay. so where do you see yourself at 40? Yeah, I think where I see myself at 40, I, I, hate, I hesitate to say this in a public because it's a, you know, I'm pretty good at what I do overall and running the company. But for me, by the time I'm 40, my son's going to be probably introducing into sports and different things. So I want to have more flexibility. Mm-hmm. What I really, really want to continue to strive to do, right, I always say, you know, elevate and delegate. Mm-hmm. And so I've continued to always do that. And it's crazy to think about five years into this thing, I have an entire leadership team. I can go away for a month. And the company's fine. It's going to run itself. Will it be run itself as well as if I was there? Of course not, right? I'm not naive to not understand my capabilities and abilities. But by the time I'm 40, my goal is really to be sitting on boards, strategically running companies, but not actually managing people, mm-hmm. right? On a regular day-to-day basis. Mm-hmm. The City Life Company, right? I, 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 My hands are much more involved still, but we've taken a lot of steps to move me up where I'm, for the most part, truly just acting as what a CEO should do. But certainly not all the way there, right? But, you know, we've taken massive strides to get there, and I continue to focus on those things, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that continues to be the goal, right? To continue to grow and develop. I'm not going to lie to you. I want to be a billionaire one day. And so that's ultimately what I'm chasing. I'm starting with the end in mind, and I'm working backwards. For me, from a visionary perspective, it's we got to get to a billion dollars in assets under management by 2030, mm-hmm. right, at, at the City Life level company. And in the meantime, I'm doing some other things to be able to create different strategies and ways to be able to get there faster. Mm-hmm. Uh, at that business level, at the other business levels. And ultimately, my end goal is really a billion dollars that I'm worth one day, right? And so... That's not absurd. I don't think it is either. Mm -hmm. And I think that I'll get there, Mm -hmm. right? Because I already have my intentions set on it. Mm -hmm. And I focus on it. And Mm -hmm. I I live and breathe it every day. And that's what I tell other people, right? You don't have to have that kind of ambition, but you better have some time ambition. Otherwise, why do you wake up? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Like, if you don't have a goal in life, like, what are you doing? And if you don't have a goal that scares you... I mean, you have to have a goal that's like, wow, that's really, really big. Yeah. If it's mm-hmm. you know, a doable goal that you can have tomorrow, that's not a goal. You want to know my other goal before that? One of my things along the way to get there is I want to bring an NBA team to Pittsburgh. Oh. That's no. one of my crazy goals. It's actually funny, too. I had a, you know, uh, he's now a business partner with me, but he was in town from Dallas, super successful guy, really high up in some different tech companies, corporate level, and he was in town for a day, and we actually had all of familia up in you know, in the city Mm -hmm. and uh, we were sitting at the bar having a drink, eating some, you know, whatever. And uh, I told him that. 
And so literally the next 20 minutes, the man literally breaks down exactly how to get started there mm. and start to do, he's like, do these seven things. And I looked at him, I said, I love you for that. <laughs> but I'm going to take that in table for seven minutes because it's not a part of the vision, the vision today. Like there's no ability and I'd just be wasting my time doing that. Mm. And so like goal number one is a billion dollars in assets under management. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we'll assess and figure out if we can start that roadmap. But the billion dollars in assets under management puts me in a different level mm -hmm. to be able to start potentially having those conversations. But without that, like, we can't lose focus of exactly what it is that we're working on. And so focus is a, a superpower, mm -hmm. right? Shiny object syndrome mm -hmm. is as real as it gets. Mm -hmm. The two of you, I'm sure, <laughs> can talk to that for until you're blue in the face around shiny object syndrome, right? Especially from an entrepreneur. It's an entrepreneurial death sentence. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. that's kind of what I try to do. Like, what is, what are we, what is our focus? And that's why we run on what's called EOS, mm -hmm. right, from the book called Traction, because that really puts a fundamental way to be able to structure mm -hmm. ensuring that we don't get shiny object syndrome mm -hmm. as a company, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. then grounds me as an individual for the same exact things. And it's still so, so hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's still so hard. Yeah. Right. So you mentioned Shark Tank. Yeah. Now you're talking about NBA. Didn't Cuban just sell? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. He sold, but he still, I mean, he's just incredible. I think he sold for three and a half. I forget the number three is, is in the building, but he mm -hmm. maintained control, mm -hmm. which is insane. But he sold oh. it. He's from around here. You're talking about basketball. You mentioned, I mean, I'm just thinking, we've been talking about manifesting stuff all day. Yeah. Oh, right? I trust mm -hmm. me. I, I, I know. But again, it's part of, you know what I mean? It's part of the the way that you have, right? I can't just call Cuban and he's going to answer, right? But it's getting in the right <laughs> networks, talking Why to the right not? people. I mean, I literally have a call today at 4 o'clock with a guy worth $400 million. Mm -hmm. We have an hour call today, right? And so he, he could probably get Cuban on the phone. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, right? And so it's just continuing to build your network, continuing to to be intentionally focused around what it is that you want and where it is that you're going and how to get there. Build the roadmap mm -hmm. to get there, right? And to me, a lot of that is networking because at the end of the day, networking is, you know, what all people, net, your network is your net worth at the end of the day, right? Mm -hmm. And I believe Amen. that wholeheartedly. And so, um, you know, that's a lot of what I'm focused on right now too. And having Ken as a mentor and a coach and, you know, we're mm -hmm. actually business partners on a, on a venture that we have together as well. Mm -hmm. You know, Ken could call whoever he wants right now, literally. I mean, Ed might let any of these guys and he gets them on the phone. So um, there's intention behind that mm -hmm. at the end of the day, right? Sure. There's intention around partnering with Ken on a yeah. business, right? And different things to be able to accelerate, right? Where it is that you want to go. The time is now. Let's move the ball in the right directions to right. get wherever it is that we want to go. Mm -hmm. That's great. All right, so what is the sport that you do whenever you just want to go have fun? Is it basketball that you yeah, play? Yeah, I played, I played college football at Duquesne. You know, I still uh -huh. love football, watch it. Uh, you know, but I've always loved basketball. Mm -hmm. I golf, right, but I don't golf nearly as much. I refuse to kind of take time away from my kids now to golf, so it's really gone downhill. It's What's your be handicap? A, uh, I think I'm a 14 right now, 14 or 15 right now, but mm -hmm. it's gone down. Uh, again, I don't golf on weekends. You know, weekends are family time always. I try super hard not to work. So I've got to build golf around work. Mm -hmm. I'm getting better at that, right? Mm -hmm. And that's part of the elevation and the delegate and right. elevate process that I'm going through. Because mm -hmm. we do have, you know, we have over 100 investors. And so a lot of my job is still also investor relations mm -hmm. um, and building the network and building those connections. And so a lot of those guys do like to golf. Yeah. Uh, so I try, to, I try to bring those two together as much as I can. But uh, So where would you uh, take guys to go golfing? So our, our members up Chartiers Country Club. Okay. Uh, I live in Upper St. Clair. I actually likely will be joining Upper St. Clair. Just again, time. I'm super focused on time. Every minute matters. And so I live three minutes from Upper St. Clair Country Club and 20 minutes from Chartiers. So if I go five times a month, right, right that's two hours that I save if I just play at Upper St. Clair as opposed to Chartiers. That's two hours of, you know, what I would call my hourly rate and what I can charge and what I can make in coaching clients and different things. And so... Uh, it's worth to spend a different amount of money to join there as opposed to the other one for the time savings mm -hmm. at the yeah. end of the day, right? And that's mm -hmm. the number side of me evaluating everything that I do strategically, right? But that's that's what I do. And I, we play basketball, so our company plays basketball every Wednesday at 8 a.m. So everyone in the company wants to come play. We hoop, um, right? It's just it's a time thing. Yeah. You know, it's, it's really difficult now with oh, – yeah everything that I have going on and, you know, the kids at home, it makes it tough to, to do leisure activities as much as I would like. But but that's still good for you. That's self-care, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And, you know, account of, I'm huge on accountability. So, right, if you, you know, if it's not documented, it's not done, I always say. So, for instance, on the health side, you know, I'm trying to focus a lot more on health this year. So I have my goals and uh, the marketing team, right, we're posting it weekly on social so I can 
it's a lot harder to not. It's a lot harder to not do something and skip what you say and do if you're posting it to the world to see everything, right? Yes, yes. So yes, that's my way because I've I've always I've always prioritized uh, the business over my health. I always have done that in my entire life. I said, well, if I start telling the world what my goals are on the health side, mm-hmm. I'm not going to let myself not do it, mm-hmm. right? And so now mm-hmm. it makes me prioritize that time. Mm-hmm. And so so far this year, it's been a fundamental change for me that's really working, mm-hmm. and I think it's. It's helping the mental mindset too, right? To continue to push forward when problems come up, like we're going to be fine, right? Let's keep going. Let's keep getting after this thing. So, so you said before you're from Pittsburgh, right? Yep. And yeah, born and raised here. in Mount Washington. Okay. And you've been here the whole time. You went to Duquesne. Yep. I uh, Bishop Canavan High School in Green Tree, Duquesne University and College. Bought my first house in Mount Washington, right across the street from my mom. <laughs> uh, lived in Shady Side for a couple months. Lived in South Side for about five years. And then I uh, was in Mount Washington, and we moved to Upper St. Clair. So, yeah, the furthest I've ever really been from from uh, <laughs> Center City is about 25 minutes, which is where I'm at right now. Mm-hmm. All right, so, you, okay, so everything's in Southside now. So five years in Southside, what was the go-to bar for you? Oh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> depends what <laughs> depends what, what uh, part of my life I was in, ultimately, I think. But uh, Carson City is always a staple. They're not even open right now. I mean, mm-hmm. Southside's going through some... Changes. Some massive changes right mm-hmm. now. Uh, Carson City was always a good time. Mario's was a staple. Mm-hmm. You know, if I was underage, you know, back when I was at Duquesne, it was a little bit different. We okay. won't talk too much about that <laughs> <laughs> back in the day. But those two were always the staples. And then I don't know if you remember Heinz 86 way back in the day. Yeah. We used to go there. Okay. Um, yeah, good times. It's unfortunate that it, well, it's unfortunate and fortunate that those times don't happen much anymore for me, right, with the kids and everything, <laughs> the business and everything, which is a great thing. But uh, yeah. It's fun looking back on those times mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, Southside definitely has some stories, some memories, oh, yeah. and you know, I think that's part of growing up. Is I'm, yeah. I'll never forget when I was a freshman in college, walking back from the bars at Duquesne across the bridge, and some kid tried throwing me off. <gasps> <laughs> that, that's my oh, one of my crazy Southside stories. Oh my, that yeah. <laughs> yeah, was nuts. I mean, luckily I was at the time 265 pounds, and <laughs> you know, was quite strong. I played ball, and so mm-hmm. it was not Ooh. really a fair fight at the end of the day so why did he want to that's the question uh, <laughs> not to dive too much into it but you know relationships and women i was just gonna oh, say there oh, had to have been a girl in this story uh, at some point yeah exactly right it was yeah it was that mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. you're a ladies man i guess huh uh you know i, I think not did not you just really, hear how high his voice i did got? i did <laughs> that's a yes yeah, i mean listen I, I, I certainly yes. enjoyed you know the the nightlife scene and going out and having some fun and i still do enjoy mm-hmm. right the the lighter side of of living if you will and enjoying ourselves and nice dinners and wines and mm-hmm. um you know expensive drinks and things like that now that i could afford a little bit differently right um you know but i've always just worked so hard you know i always used to say even right out of college, you know, I hated my job. I was in public accounting, but I said, look, for me, I don't know what I want to do when I grow up. I still don't. Mm-hmm. Right? We talked about that, but for me, it was always if I outwork everybody times two, in 10 years from now, I'm going to have a 20-year career to everybody <laughs> else in my level's 10-year career, right. and I'll take that to bat against right. anybody because I was never smarter than anybody at the end of the day. <clears throat> I just always don't outwork them. And so I still fundamentally believe in that. Mm-hmm. The key to me, though, is you just got to be able to consider and think about what work really is mm-hmm. and find a way to make work fun. Mm-hmm. Right, so mm-hmm. that you actually enjoy doing it, and then it's not really work at the end of the day. Right. And that's what I've been able to find for myself, right? Because if I'm having a bad day or I don't want to go to work now, I just don't go. You know, and even at City Life, we talk about it all the time. Like, if you're having a bad day, you know, our fourth core value is the red sweater, which is a tribute to Mr. Mm-hmm. Rogers locally, right? It's about yeah. building happiness, right? It's about uh, positivity, right? Putting smiles on people's faces. At the end of the day, we're in real estate. We're not brain surgeons where we're trying to save somebody's life today. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's a little bit of a different feeling. And so if you're miserable today, like, don't come to work, please. Go to the coffee shop. Stay in bed. Like, we're a results-driven organization. I'm not watching your time. I don't care. Yeah. Right? But do not bring that mm-hmm. negative, miserable attitude to this company and put mm-hmm. on anybody else. Right. And by the way, if you're not smiling when you walk into the building and creating positivity around here, then, like, there's a problem. Mm-hmm. You know, that's our core values. And so, you know, are we perfect? Am I perfect? Heck no. Do I have to be in the office and meeting sometimes when I'm in a bad mood because something went wrong? For <laughs> sure. You know, but it's a constant self-reflection and trying to get better at what we're doing hmm. in order to be in a position to not have to do that, right? And then being in a position where when we are, hmm. let's not let's not affect other people at the end of the day. Because again, why are we getting out of bed? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I like, agree. You know what I mean? I always say, right, the old famous saying, there's two things we know in life. One, we're going to die, and two, we're going to pay taxes. Yeah. So I always say, look, I solved the second problem. I don't pay taxes anymore, you know. But the first one, like, we're going to die, and so we might as well enjoy <laughs> life until we do. Might as well. Right? Yeah, true story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Do you know why he wore a red sweater? No. It's got all of his tattoos. He had tattoos. Wow. Nice. So he covered it all up? Interesting. Mm-hmm. I was hoping for a little bit. That's crazy. <laughs> but you would never think, no. right? Yeah. Because no. people crazy. judge. Yeah. 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 All about kindness. But yeah. Isn't that funny? Mm-hmm. I did not know that either. Yeah. I just found that out. What do you think about art on the body? I'm okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, who am I to judge what anybody yeah. else wants? Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. It's their body. It's their ink. Yeah. I'm that's, sure. That's what they, I say, too. It's all about what makes you happy. Mm-hmm. Right. They put it on there for a reason. Yeah. You know? And. Whatever My biggest is. thing with, with art on the body is what I always just say is like, just make sure you really want it. Because it's a little you're more stuck permanent, with it. Right? Yeah, like <laughs> are you though? Many well, you're not, yeah, right? I yeah. do have friends that have gotten removed, but yeah. it's painful and expensive to get tattoos mm-hmm. removed right now. Yeah. I mean, you could put something over top of it, yeah. you know? Or mm-hmm. you could, I, mean, I think things have changed over the years. I think, you know, 20 years ago, if somebody had a tattoo, people did look at them. Mm-hmm. A little differently. Yeah. yeah. Now, I think it's become so commonplace. I don't think anybody yeah. really thinks much of it. You know, unless you, I don't know, the whole snake on the face. and I don't know. So we do still think about it. Because I was going to say, I, I agree with you to a certain extent. I think it's moved forward for sure. Mm-hmm. But I think we definitely still think about it subconsciously. It kind of depends on, I mean, right. a little tattoo on your arm or on your ankle or something is one thing. But, yeah, some of these all over, all over your face, face and neck and yeah the so whole post s- malone you're not about the, no <laughs> no i mean i like his like his music and you know but yeah he, that it, it's distracting don't you think from his music yeah no no you don't think it is no not from his music I don't know. It distracts me because I'm focusing on that when I'm looking. Close not your when eyes. I, not <laughs> when I, yeah, not when I'm listening. You know, if I'm just listening, you know, to it, yeah. But, yeah, if I'm watching him, it does. It distracts me because he's got so much going on. So we call on. her a squirrel. Mm. She's. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I do. I will tell you, right, like if you're in a meeting and someone, ha- like, you know what I mean, you have, it makes you think, at least in my opinion, like what made you go want to do those different things? Mm. At least mm. potentially ask that question and understand deeper the, you know, the deeper meaning behind why it is what they're doing. I think you got to understand that to really understand mm-hmm. why they might have did it or why they are who they are, mm-hmm. which is hard to do, right? Because a lot of times you don't get those opportunities. Right. And quite frankly, you might think that it's intimidating or weird mm-hmm. to ask those questions to somebody that did that when you're just being genuine and wanting to get to know somebody, mm-hmm. which is how I try to approach every relationship, right? Like, hey, listen, I don't know you. I'm just trying to really get to know who you are, mm-hmm. which is another thing about me, like in networking events. I hate networking. I'm horrible in big rooms, <laughs> right? I can speak in front of anybody. You know, I can have deep conversations with anybody. But if you put me in a room with 200 people and you ask me to go uh, work the room, if you will, mm-hmm. I'm calling Rachel because I, I can't do it. Like, I just, <laughs> I struggle at it. You know, the main thing, the reason for me is I have this, like, deep relationships, right? And so every time mm-hmm. I go to different masterminds, my goal is to find two people in that room and build a really deeper relationship with them. And so you can tell quickly, but I don't work rooms. Mm. I also read another stat. I have no idea if it's true, but you can only have 150 actual real relationships. Mm. Anything above that's not real because you can't you can't have meaningful, deep, I guess, memories and understandings and different things with people. Sense. I have no idea if that's true, but it resonated with me because I'm not good at it. Because you're like, yeah, that's why. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> whatever whatever yeah, excuse that, I can make to give myself yeah. the, the pop out of why though. I'm not good at working rooms. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that makes perfect sense, though. How do you how do you have relationships with that many people? Right? I mean, who, who has time for that? Yeah. Um, I even think 150 might be a high number. For sure. For real relationships. I'm not talking about the people that yeah. you've met a few times and you know their name and they know what you do and, you know, that you know, that level, but having a real relationship. Yeah. What's your name again? Um, I don't remember. (laughs) It's like, you know, there's 250 people in the mastermind. Like that's why I always say, you know, there's some people that go in and focus on meeting everybody to understand what Mm -hmm. everybody's doing and have all of that. I'm very different. I go and focus on a few couple deep relationships. And what always comes from that for me, it's been successful with partnerships, Mm -hmm. relationships, deal opportunities, Mm -hmm. different things like that, because you really develop something and then you want to do things together mm-hmm. where it's like, hey, if I leave here and we never talk again at the end of the day, yeah, we have a relationship we've met. 
But, like, there's nothing really going to ever come from that, right? You're not going to call me and say, hey, I have this business opportunity for you. Let's go get lunch real quick. And then I say, yeah, I'm clearing my schedule. Let's go get lunch. Like, that's not going to happen, right? right? And so, but building the deeper relationships, then that will happen, right? Then it makes it worth it, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, we're never perfect at anything we do, but it's like, Mm -hmm. let's try, you know? Mm -hmm. All right, mm-hmm. so tattoos, do you have any? I have one. Yeah. yeah I have my family crest right here on my chest. Um, you know, my nice big family crest. I want to get my kids' names in it, but my wife is currently not allowing me to get any more ink <laughs> on my body. But um, <laughs> may, maybe she won't listen to this, and one day she'll just see the names on there. <laughs> does she have any tattoos? She does not. No, yeah. she's against tattoos. She doesn't believe in uh, ruining your body for no reason and expressing yourself through uh, body art. Well, don't don't give up. So my husband was always anti tattoos. So he was. What was it? How many tattoos do you have? Two. Okay. And he got his first tattoo two weeks ago. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Go for him. I know. Did he? He did. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna have to ask him about that. What did he get? It's, it's right here too. Okay. It's an infinity sign. Oh. And one has his initial and then my initial. Okay. Which I was so cute. Yeah, I was like so cute. Well, I didn't. I didn't even know he was doing it, and he went in the back. Oh my god. And I said to them, I'm like, he's not getting my name, right? Please, not my name. Just not my name. That's all I said. And they were laughing. They're like, why? And I said, it's not bad. I just don't believe in that. I think it's bad luck to do that. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I said, just please, if he's if he's doing it, stop him. Yeah. <laughs> so he my, just had the my, For me, too, right, from a business perspective, I, I don't I don't judge like, like that, but I do think that there are people out there to do. And so the way mm-hmm. that I kind of always approach everything is don't try to rock any boats. Mm-hmm. So same things when it comes to like politics. Like you'll never see me talk politics. You'll never see me post politics. You'll never th- right. see me do anything there. Agreed. Not because of that I don't have opinion, but it's because you own a business. No, no positivity can come from it. Only negative people. Only negative things can come from that. Mm-hmm. It's the same concept with tattoos, right? Like I don't care if you have a tattoo on your forehead, <laughs> right? But at the end of the day, if I show up with a tattoo on my forehead, you might not care, but you might. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. why would I give myself right. a chance for you to care about that? Right. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I've never done. It's the same with the arm, but I have no problems with it. Mm-hmm. But that's why I have one there because it's, you know, at the end of the day, I'm never, nobody ever is going to see unless I'm at the pool with my kids. Yeah, right. And right. Then I don't like, yeah. right. if you have a problem with me at the pool with my kids, like, I'm good. I don't want to ever speak to you again, anyways. Mm-hmm. I don't care. I don't need you in my life. Yeah. Right. That's right. what I was asking him, but he always wears sleeves, like long sleeves, long sleeves for work. So yeah. he doesn't have to worry about yeah. that. Yeah. It's like, again, mm-hmm. the strategic benefit. I don't care if I have it on my forehead too and you don't like me for it. But at the end of the day, I'm a businessman and I want to do business. And a lot of times things make sense strategically. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to give you hey, the option to sure. not right. want that. Yeah, right? Right. So that's kind of always been my approach when it comes to mm-hmm. ink. Yep. You will. Yep. <laughs> like your holy cow. We're almost at an hour. Oh, we are. Yeah. Time flies when you're having fun. Talk, <laughs> talk, <laughs> going talk, life, right? Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's this has been really right. enlightening. Oh, good. Yeah, good so conversation. Yeah, good absolutely. Yeah. We might have to have you back. I always say, right, the the, the uh, if you get a podcast person to come, a guest to come back a second time, that means they did something right. <laughs> Very well, I'd true. love to come back anytime. Yeah. I live about ten minutes away, so it's easy for me. Mm-hmm. Got yeah. offices right in Upper St. Clair now too, which is right there. So it's Good. anytime you want to have me, happy to. Okay. Yeah, shoot I'm in the, the South Hills. Beep. Yeah, for sure. Well, we end all of our podcasts with a frostbite question. Okay. And I let the co-host choose the question, Uh-oh. so you're in Uh-oh. for it. Uh-oh. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you're in for it, but. <laughs> Okay, um, so tell me, what's the frostbite that keeps you sharp and ready to take on new challenges in your field? What keeps me sharp? What's the frostbite that keeps me sharp? And what? Moving in the right direction in my field? And ready to take on new challenges in your field. Uh, I think my desire to want to win at the end of the day. Okay. Um, you know, there's so many challenges that pop up every single day and they're exhausting. You know, a good mm-hmm. friend of mine posted a couple of weeks back about if you're an entrepreneur and every single week you don't wake up at least one point in time where you want to just shut everything down and go work at McDonald's and you're doing something wrong. And it resonated <laughs> with me. You know, I think that that's, that's the truth, right? But that's at the same time what motivates me because I know that if, if, if I can stick to those different things and most people can't at the end of the day, mm-hmm. that's what's going to create massive success for me and then really pushing the accountability side of for myself and for everybody else. Um, you know, I think that's that's what I would think the, the frostbite from because everything else is is what it is. Mm-hmm. Right? We face challenges all the time, people yeah. challenges, right? You know, market challenges, right? I mean, the market's been nuts over the last 18 months and here we are, you know, been a struggle but we've navigated through that really successfully 
I think the answer is as long as you don't quit, you're never going to lose. Mm. Right. And so right. every day, it's all good. To, some go, it's easy to quit. It's mm. always easier to quit. No. Mm-hmm. Oh. Always easier to quit. And so if you have the mental fortitude to just keep pushing yourself, right, and never give up, never quit, you, it's crazy when you look back on what you've been able to accomplish, right? Because in the days mm-hmm. that go by, it's hard to see it. Mm-hmm. When you take a, you know, you take the months and the and you look back and reflect on all of that time, it's like wow. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, we built a hundred million dollar real estate portfolio that we control in five years. Like what? It's still insane to me, right? To think yeah. about the end of the day, but it's like we're just getting started, mm-hmm. you know. So the days get tough, right? The days can be long, but the, sure. but the weeks and the months are so short. So that's what keeps me going. Love it. All right, guys. Well, that's another episode of Frostbite. Thank you so much, Casey. For- and to Linda for being here as well and we will catch you on the next one thank you